channel. Today I am here with another Worth It or Worthless. Dun, 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 dun. Worth It or Worthless. I have not done one of these in about two months, I would say. Like, I didn't do one in December. I don't think I did one in November. I may have done one in November. So maybe it's been a month and a half or so. But I have been doing so many reviews, individual reviews of products that I haven't really had a chance to play with a lot of my haul things that I've gotten. But I'm getting back into the routine of things of certain items that I have been purchasing that I have been trying that I'm not doing individual reviews for. And I got my thoughts on them. So if you're curious to see what I have to say about certain things that I have hauled, just keep on watching. All right, so let's get started on the palettes. I have quite a few palettes that I have purchased that I either have been loving or have been on the fence with. The first one I have is this one. This is the Tarte in the Light palette, I'm pretty sure. In the Light, in the Light palette. I did a tutorial on this and I told you guys I was on the fence. I wanted to try these out a little bit more. And to be honest with you, I am... Might as well take these things out. The brush, I think it's really good. And I do have quite a few of these mascaras that I'm just waiting to try because I have so many mascaras open. I wish that the, this palette was like this section up here. I love this section where it brings the bronzer. The other blushes are the bronzer, the blush, and those eyeshadows. I honestly wish that this was like this down here. I felt like these, the, the mattes were really nice. But a palette this big and bulky, I feel like I need the whole thing to work for me. If I'm going to make room for this big old thing in my collection, I need the whole thing to work for me. And I felt like the shimmery shades lacked the bam that I love in a shimmery eyeshadow. Most of these, I tried the, the taupey colors. I tried this burgundy color. I tried the gold color. And I feel like they worked better when I had a base with them and not so much when they were on their own. When they were on their own, I really had to build up the color and I felt like it faded throughout the day and it didn't give me that effect that I really love in an eyeshadow that's shimmery that really gives you that kind of like what I'm wearing on my eyes today. So would I recommend this? I know it's probably not available anymore, but it's not my favorite. I'm not going to lie to you. I know that some of my friends rave about it and they love it, but for me, mm. the next palette I have is the Too Faced Stardust by Vegas Nay. Now this was an awesome palette. I love this palette. I love every color in here. I love that they have a pop of purple in here. They have my everyday colors. They have taupes. They have bronzes. These matte colors are amazing. Some of my favorite colors are red base browns, orange browns, orange colors. Those, those earthy colors are some of my favorite matte eyeshadows to use. This was an awesome palette. I love this palette. It sucks that it was limited edition because I wish that this was permanent because everyone needs this palette in their life. This was awesome. I'm so happy that I got this palette because I was not even going to get it because I was trying to be good, but you guys know that when the holidays comes, I just can't help myself. So yes, I love this. Another palette. I bought this palette after it was released. I didn't get it right away and I'm so glad I did. I love this palette. I think I have a tutorial coming up with it or if it's not already up, but this is the palette I used all through the holiday season for Christmas, the day after Christmas, New Year's, whatever it was, those two weeks that were the holidays, this is the palette that I reached for. I love this. I think I'm going to do a few more tutorials with this palette. It's just so pretty. I love every color in here. I can see me, even these pink ones that I normally wouldn't go for, I can see me using them. This Earl Grey color right here is calling my name. I really, really like Too Faced palettes. They, you get so much product in this. Like if you, I have heard those that pan, if you try to pan a Too Faced palette, they're, they wish you the best luck because there's so much product in each individual eyeshadow in here. It's so packed in there that you really do get your money's worth when it comes to Too Faced palettes. So if you've on the fence about this one yes and I love the fact that it smells like chocolate and you know me and my collections I needed this in my life because I have all the other two and I really do love it I really I'm genuinely in love with this palette every color it takes a lot for me not to use this every day but I love this palette yes you need it go get it I'm gonna whack you if you don't another palette that I knew hands down I was gonna enjoy 
and I know that it has a lot of neutrals in it but it's so good and I am wearing this on my eyes with another eyeshadow on my lid and it's the Gwen Stefani palette I purchased this palette from my mother for Christmas because I knew she would love it as well there's so many more neutrals in here than there are of the you know there's only three colors in here that really like stand out other than that it's mainly neutrals but if you guys remember that palette that I purchased last year, it was four eyeshadows and it was from that Pulp Fiction collection. I'm going to put a picture here. I have it down here, but it's going to take me forever to get to it. That palette blew me away as far as the texture, the buttery feeling of those Urban Decay eyeshadows. And there was only four colors. That formula I wish was throughout all of Urban Decay's palettes and they brought it back in this palette. If you bought that Pulp Fiction palette with the four eyeshadows in it, you know what I'm talking about as far as the way these feel. These feel just like that palette. I barely put my finger in there and it is so soft and buttery. I could only wish that all Urban Decay palettes felt like this. This on its own is just beautiful. I love all the colors that blend in here. They look so nice on the eyes. I can wear this every single day and I can get a pop of color or I can use this for work. If you work or if you are in a corporate environment and you have to go to work and you need to be presentable, this is such a nice everyday palette. It's great for those that have mature skin, those that are just starting out, that are preteens. I feel like this is such a good palette for so many ages i love this and it sucks that it is limited edition because it is a really good palette and it is super heavy i'm sure you've heard it. it's so heavy and very unique in the packaging you bet you i will be getting the blush palette i'm gonna get it but this if you still can get it get it the last palette i have is another one of my favorites this one i love more than the first one because this is just my colors this is me and that's the Tarlet in Bloom palette. Oh my goodness. You saw me use this in partly in a tutorial, but these colors are me. I don't personally use them as rose. I just go in and use whatever color I want. Anytime I needed a help, a guide, as far as a color to bring in because I'm using something else, this is the palette I touch. If I need a dark to darken up something I'm gonna use this if I need a transition color and I don't have one I'm gonna use this if I need a brow bone color that's matte I'm gonna use this like this is the one that I can constantly grab and use to help me with other palettes or other eyeshadows I love the formula of this if this was only the formula of this then I would be so so happy because I would get so many colors this is what I mean when I'm going to grab a palette I want all the colors to work the same and what I mean by working the same is the shimmers are gonna stand out like they're supposed to the mattes are going to blend out like they're supposed to and this has everything and when I explained to you guys about the Lorac Mega Pro 2 the one in the blue packaging where I told you guys I, I wasn't really a hundred percent happy about that one now I know that I like this one more than that one and I'm going to explain to you why. When I used that palette, that one had two rows, two rows full of mattes. I remember using a blue matte eyeshadow and the pigmentation on that matte eyeshadow sucked to the point where I had to constantly build up that color. I used this one as a matte color. I barely had to build that up. I think I used one layer and it was just as opaque as it is in here. That's what I was hoping for with the Lorac Mega Pro 2. I wanted that same effect where it looked exactly like the color in the pan. I didn't have to build it up too much. I didn't have to use a base and it just glided on my eyes so nicely. This is an awesome palette. This is a staple. I love it. I love the mirror. I love the smallness. I can travel with this and I don't have to grab any other palette at all. I get three shimmer shades which is just enough. And the three shimmer shades that are in here are so different. Here's one, here's two, and then the bottom one's three. They're all so different in tone that you're not going to get the same shimmery look on your eyes. So if you don't have this one, you need this one too. 
I got these as well as the purple ones. You guys know how I felt about the purple ones. I loved it. Again, these are just as great. I feel like all of these in this type of packaging are really, really nice. They looked very beautiful. They blended really nicely. The only downside is I have to bring in matte shades from other palettes. Hence the Tartlet in Bloom is a prime example of what I would bring in for these palettes but I love this this one was rich gold which was absolutely beautiful and then this one's copper peach so these colors are definitely up my alley I love these palettes so now I am up to three I think that I'm content with that I'm happy with the three that I have the next palette I have is the uh, Ciate Olivia Palermo palette um this palette I used I used it in some of my videos I do like it <sighs> The pigmentation is there. Pigmentation's there. They blend really nicely. Um, the colors are really, really pretty. But I feel like I need more. Like I, I, I need to always pull something else from another palette in order to help me with this one. This can't be a standalone palette for me. I have to pull other things out. The only thing that I have here that really works for me is this brow bone color that's matte in the center. Other than that, I always have to pull something out. A lighter color, a transition color, um, a darker outer V color. But the colors are pretty. It's a really nice palette. Is it worth the money? I don't think so. To be honest with you, I'm going to be flat out and honest with you. It's beautiful. It's nice, but I don't feel like it was worth the money. And the other downside is I have to keep the box because I don't know where the box is right now, but I had to keep the box because the names of the palettes are on the box. So I have to cut it out and put it on the back of this. So that's the other thing. But it is a pretty palette. The colors are soft. Like the eyeshadows themselves are soft and pigmented. They blend really good on your eyes. But... I could have done without this one and the smoky one because I probably just already had this in my collection, these colors, and I need I need assistant palettes. So palettes that are gonna assist me with this one. I just can't use this by itself. All right, on to these eyeshadows that I just recently hauled um, that I showed you guys maybe in a few videos ago. I have been playing around with these and I have thoughts on these. I was gonna do a full review on them, but I'm like, you know what? Let me just show you because I only got four colors and that'll be it for me. Now, I wore this color right here which is called Pain All Chocolate. And then I also figured, alright, let me try this color right here which are two different colors out of the spectrum so they're not very similar so I'm going to get different effects on these. How I feel about these. Okay, so if you see these, if you touch them, to the feeling they're really, really soft and sort of creamy they remind me of the color pop feeling but just a little bit more packed in and more dense the actual eyeshadows didn't wow me in the swatches so I, I told you guys I have to try them on my eyes in order to really get a grasp on these I wore these and I applied them both with a brush and with a finger and I got the same effect to be honest with you I didn't feel like I got more of a metallic look with my eyes when I use my finger versus a brush I felt like that I I got the same thing but if I were to choose these over the infallible um what are they called the pressed pigment ones the infallible like the ones that come in the amber rush and the bronze taupe color you know which ones I'm talking about, the ones that are really, really good? I'd go over, I'd pick those. These did not wow me. And the reason why they didn't wow me is because I felt like these looked like every other eyeshadow that I can get in a palette. They did not give me that bam eye look like this one does. It doesn't give me that nice metallic foiled look that I love. These looked promising. But they just didn't give me that, they just did not wow me. They didn't knock my socks off. They didn't, they were not some panty wetters. They were horrible. I, I wouldn't say they're horrible. It's just, they're, I don't think they're worth it. I really don't think they're worth it. They're not. And I'll tell you what, the, I feel like the lighter colors may not wow me, but maybe a darker color may. Because these two colors, at least for me, I, I, I'm going to need to use these with a base to enhance the color. I'm going to have to wet my brush to enhance the color. There are eyeshadows out there that I don't need to wet and they give me that nice metallic 
foiled look and these look like they would do it but I wasn't happy with the eyeshadows and not to mention one day I used them with just a regular primer and I had a little bit of creasing and fading. I had more so fading and creasing when I used a primer alone. But when I used a primer and a kind of like a paint pot on top of a primer, the color stood out more, but I still had creasing and I had fading, but not as much as the, the first time around when I just used a primer. So they did fade on my eyes, they did crease on my eyes, so no, save your money, save your money. I don't know what people are talking about because even in a swatch they just didn't wow me and I knew I had a feeling I wasn't going to like these. So I may exchange these for two darker colors and maybe test it out that way and let you know because I only got two light colors and maybe the light colors may work the darker colors may work better than the lighter color colors. So I'm not ruling these out yet. I'm going to get the two darker colors and then get back to you guys on another worth it or worthless about these. But as far as the lighter colors, this one, please. Everyone's all like, oh, oh my God, they don't play me. No. I hauled these two things as well recently in that haul, um, haul video, I should say. This is the Wet n Wild Rose Champagne Blush. This is what it looks like. You guys saw me swatch it in that video. I was not happy with this at all. I was not happy. I wasn't happy with it when I swatched it in that video and when I put it on my cheeks. Why did they ruin such a good blush line? I'm hoping that the new ones, the new reformulated older colors aren't like this one. This one I had to build up on my cheeks and I've never had that issue with any other blush ever. I am so pale. I'm the palest Hispanic you can think of right now that I feel like any blush that I put on, you're going to see. No, not this one. This one I had to build up and then when I wanted to diffuse it with this brush right here, I use a dual fiber brush right here to blend out just so I don't have any, you know, harsh lines. I blend it away. It blended away so I had to be so the next day after I realized it blended away like within two hours I realized it didn't look like I had any blush at all like right now it looks like I have blush I'm not wearing this obviously the second time I used it I didn't blend it away but I really had to build it up so I built it up but by the end of the day again I had no blush on my cheeks I don't feel like this is really going to work for many people if I am this light colored and it doesn't show up on me much I can only imagine on anybody else so as far as this color I don't like it I, it looks pretty in the pan and I had high hopes for it because it's a pretty color but it just did not show up and it did not last so no don't like you the next product I have is this wet n wild illuminating palette this one I told you they redid. They had them in a small tin container. They were really pigmented back in the day. And um, I remember they would break easily, so I got rid of them. That's why I didn't really show them on any videos of mine. So I pulled this out and I figured, all right, I'm gonna use these two outside colors because I figured these two are gonna be the colors of, you know, that's gonna match me. So here I'm gonna show you swatches of them. Really pretty colors. These are very, very proud. Look, they're right there. You see them right there? They're very powdery, but they're very nice and buttery when you touch them. But they have a lot of powder kick up. And they look really pretty and subtle when you put them on your cheeks. Can you see? Like, you see how subtle these look on my hand just swatching them. So you're not going to get a glitter look to these. You're not going to get any shimmer to them. You're going to have a really nice glow within cheek color so I was like oh okay I'm, I'm liking this so I put them on I tried this a few days as well just like the blush and by the end of the day I had no highlight not even by the end of the day I think it was even before lunch like it was probably I put it on at 7 30 in the morning by 11 o'clock I would look in the mirror and I had no highlight no highlight so this did not last on me and I can only imagine when I am an oily mess in the summertime how things break down faster on me this is not gonna last so I don't think this is worth it. It didn't last on me. The color's really pretty. It's nice and subtle. So if you're looking for that subtle look, 
it might work for you. I don't know, maybe for dry skin, for oily girls, I don't see it working. It just faded. It faded and it was gone and it it looked like it was going to be nice and shimmery and glowy. No. Even when you first apply it, it's very subtle. So, mm -mm. All right, so now on to lip products. Remember these? Remember these? Remember, remember, remember. All right, these are those um lip glosses from Jessie's Girl that kind of have that duo, chromey, going to give you that dimension to your lips. I like these. First of all, the formula is not sticky. It's not heavy. It glides on really nice. And I like the colors that these give you. These don't give you an extreme difference in your lip product, but you can see something. I specifically, I can't even remember. I think it may have been Tangerine. Let me look at this. No, not Tangerine. Maybe Red Dawn. Maybe Red Dawn. Yes, Red Dawn. I don't know if you guys can tell. On the doe foot applicator, there is some staining. Look, that's Red Dawn right there. I don't know if you guys can see that difference but anyway with this one what I did was I put on um, a lip liner and then I just put this on over it and I can I I that time I can tell or I I could tell that my lips shifted it had that duo chromey look to them if you wear these on their own you can see the duo chromey to them I feel like these work better when you put a lip liner down first fill in your lips and then put these on then you can really tell the effect of these but it still does give you that nice plumping look when you put them in the center of your lips. It's really nice. These are only five bucks, so I would recommend these. It's a nice formula. If they were sticky and heavy and got all that stringy, you don't get any of that with these. And these are really, really good. So I, yes, I like these. I'd use these and I'm gonna continue to use them, especially in the summer when I just want something nice and makes my lips look full. I don't need to have that stinging effect from any plumpingness. I like these a lot. I purchased these um, Hard Candy All Matte Hydrating Lip Stains. I only picked up three colors, so let me swatch these for you. This one is called Earthy Marsala. The next one is called uh, Venom, which is this purple color. And the last one is called Berry Matte. So with these, the formula is so nice. When you put these on your lips, it doesn't tug. It is completely, completely matte. I wore Earthly Marsala in my panning video that I just recently posted. And putting it on, it feels very thin. It feels like, I don't want to say paper because paper is drying, but it feels so paper thin and so lightweight. That's the word, lightweight. It feels so lightweight. It feels like you have nothing on your lips. It doesn't dry out my lips. It's a very nice, comfortable, like it says, it's a hydrating lip stain. It stains your lips. It's hydrating, so it doesn't feel drying. I really like this line. These are the only three colors that interested me. They have a lot more, but these are the only three. Only downside I have to these is that the cap, as you can see, you really have to push this in because if not, I can see the cap coming off of them. And then I got this one all, you can tell I've been liking this one. And I kind of messed it up because the cap wasn't on it all the way. But I, I can tell, I can see Earthly Marsala being some, a lot of people's favorite. It looks really pretty on. I loved how it looked on me. It's really nice and different type of brown. It's like a red brown. It's really, really pretty. So if you have been curious about these hard candy ones, I like these. I really do like them. Just the cap. The cap is driving me nuts. All right, two more products. These hydrating Neutrogena Moisture Stick Color Stains. I had shown you guys I had picked up four of these. I love these. The reason why I like these is because, one, they're hydrating. Two, you get a lot of color payoff and they're great for this time of year where you don't want to have something drying on your lips and you don't want to wear a lip gloss this is a one-stop shop you put it on it's twistable it has a really nice sweet scent to them I like the scent of these they smell really good to me nice and hydrating I get my color 
And the best part about these is that I don't feel like I need to wear a lip liner and it doesn't run all over my face. Like the Remmel Moisture lipsticks are really nice and moisturizing, but they run all over my face. These, I don't feel like do that. I can throw these in my purse and I can just put them on and it gives me a nice color. I can have these on sheer or I can build them up. So these are, they have nice different uses for them and I really enjoy how they feel on my lips. So yes to these these are the new colors that they have out i show these in my haul and i have really been enjoying these these two nude ones are going to go into my purse because that's what i've been using lately is just those last thing that i have is this lipstick from essence this is the cool nude this is a very very nice color i did not expect to like this as much as i did it looks it's definitely a cool tone lipstick and i personally wouldn't go for a cool tone lipstick but this is wearable on my skin tone. It's really nice, hydrating, pigmented. It stays on. The glossiness goes away a little bit, so it kind of looks like a semi-matte. So comfortable. It doesn't run all over my face. It's a nice formula for, what, $3, $4? Very nice color. I really enjoy their line. I love their lip liners. I've always had, and now I'm really enjoying their lipsticks. And this is a color that I wouldn't normally grab. I'd grab something like this, and this just wowed me. I took a, I took a risk getting a cool tone lipstick, and I really love this. So that is my worth that are worthless. I will list all of the products I mentioned down in the description box, so if you want to reference back, you're more than welcome to, or if you're shopping and you wanna see my description box on there. I know a few of you guys have told me when you go shopping, you just pull up my video, look at my description box, and just see what I was talking about. Good reference. I might do that with some things that I want as well. So I will list all the products down in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, welcome to the family. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did like it. I will catch you guys in my next video. And don't forget that a smile is the best makeup a girl can wear. <laughs>